three, two, one. We are live. The heater is two. Don't judge. We have light. We have heat today because it's one of those days in the Bay Area. Let's see who do we have. Giza, welcome. My nosies, you are back with the Nose Nose, the first and only channel that I know of dedicated entirely to the lesser known, to the not yet released, to the obscure items in perfumery that, in my humble opinion, need to get a little bit more attention uh, from people like you. Ashfaq says, where is she? Are you talking about my other self or are you talking about the cat? I don't know. Please clarify. Oh, there she is. Here I am. So you are talking about me, huh? <laughs> Welcome, nosies. Today we have a uh, relatively easy um, episode, if you want. Should I uh, draw the blinds? Is it is this too blinding for you? Is it too much light? Is it too much of anything? Let me know. Um, Abdelouaid, Faiz, Bonsoir, Ashfaq, Taffy. Quentin Mathieu from Belgium. Yes, yes, yes. We just got a little video. Mino Dora from the Isle of Man. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, today's uh, review is an easier one. This bothers me. Excuse me, folks. It's an easier one because I'm talking about a fragrance that I have mentioned before, but since most of you uh, have not been with me in the past um year or so uh this a nose nose venture is only a year old so um i know some of you um joined me a little bit later in my process and in my um <laughs> in my uh excursion to get here fernando soto from monterey mexico mexico welcome bienvenido uh, so if you're relatively new entrance in the crazy universe that is a nose nose, um, one of the things that I mentioned in the past is something that I have been using and something that I um, keep rediscovering every time I wear. Uh, to my surprise, it has not been covered yet. Therefore, I decided I'm going to do it today. I had a lot of um, topics to pick from, and if you indulge me, maybe I can get your opinion about what uh, next week is going to be, uh, because I've been uh, getting a lot of requests for opinions. You want my opinions? <laughs> the same type of opinions that I criticize others for. I think this is karma coming back to bite me in my opinion. Uh but I've gotten a lot of questions in the past couple of weeks about trends, about my opinion on stuff. Uh, so we can discuss this at the end of today. Uh, if this is the first time joining in, please grab a drink, relax, put your feet up, uh, get ready for some occasional dirty words and some occasional information coming in from other parts of the world because we learn as much from each other as... Um, you do from me, if you ever learn from me. Some of you are only here for my opinions and my scandal and my propensity for saying dirty things. My mom is here, Dan Lazarescu. Welcome from Romania. Abdel Sarkis from Puerto Rico. My opinion counts. Um, be diplomatic or like Eugene, no one will bother me anymore. Um, nobody does bother me, so I'm okay. Vladimir Tanaschuk or Tanaskuk, a whack pack. Apparently, I'm a whack packer too, so sure, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> Welcome, Vladimir. So, today we are talking about uh, Van Dorian from uh, the house of Paul Emilian, Serbia. Hi, and Samuel Gustav. Obrigado for joining from Portugal. Thank you for letting me know where you're coming in from. Uh, if you are new here and this is your first time, please do the same as you see others doing. Say hello, this is a party, and tell us where you're coming from. Today we're talking about Paul Emilien Vin Dorian. Of course, I pulled it up from, <laughs> from my uh, shelf and I started singing the Le Vin du Portera. It has nothing to do with the fragrance, but you know, the... Um, je n'ai pas peur de la route, foudrez-vous, ba 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 ba, de viendre près de... 
et tout ira bien. Le vent ne portera. That one. I can't do, you know, dim, sensible French voice. I can do French accent, but I cannot uh, sing like uh, Vanessa Paradis. Uh, je ne peux pas aller uh, tout sensible. Et je, yeah, I can't do that, but this is what I have in my head, even though the two don't have anything in common. Just put it out there. This is not a sensible French girl who with a, with a Mia Farrow, you know, uh, or Mia Mathieu type of um, <laughs> hair. This is a bunch of... In the face, Hakanabi from Warsaw, Poland. Welcome. <laughs> uh, oh, my French is pretty good, and my writing in French is much better than my pronunciation. Parce que je, je n'ai pas la pratique, mais je, je comprends tout. Uh, je l'ai étudié dans la colle. Ouais. Uh, yes, I speak French as well. I speak many languages. Yes. Tom of Finland. Oh, I love Tom of Finland. Yes. All right. Paul Emilien is a relatively new house. <clears throat> Stop showing off. <laughs> but why? Aren't you here for that? <laughs> You're here for the nerd part. You're not here for the, the, the duck lips. I can do duck lips, but duck lips ain't fucking marketing. Sorry to say it. Duck lips ain't shit, but I got it. Look, look. I can do it. I can I can do it all, you know, like I can do duck lips and boobs. See, I can do it. That's fine. It ain't shit. Sorry. There you have it. This is what you're here for, for my opinions. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let's go back to Paul Emilien. Again, if this is the first time you're here, please don't get scared. <laughs> Don't be scared. It's all fine. We're all good people here. Most of the people joining are either hardcore, die hard, you know, frag heads, or uh, uh, they're specialists, they're collectors, they're perfumers. We have a lot of perfumers joining in. So, yeah, this is opinion moves. Yes, this is what we're talking about. Uh, today, we're talking about <laughs> Paula Mignon. Let's go back to business people. Sheep horny. Um, no, not yet. It's morning time. I took care of Horny already. <laughs> Paula Millian uh, is a house uh, from France. Mr. Paula Millian is a very sensible creature that I don't know enough about, which I kind of like. Um, I respect those who put themselves out there um, with a lot of uh, personal information and uh, productions. Um, Philippe, uh, Sorcinelli is one of those. However, I also respect uh, some's choice to not. I don't know if it's an intentional one or just an effect of uh, their activity, but some of them are not out there. Nobody knows who this Paul Emilien is. Nobody knows who's doing his uh, fragrances, even though I have a few ideas and some things are transpiring, so I'm going to uh, be talking about that. It's a relatively new house. The guy was only born in 66, as far as I know, 65 or 66, so he's very young. Um and he's an artist. He does other things apart from perfumery. He's a self-taught perfumer. Started in the basement, you know, like most of indie houses did. Uh, he then enlisted the help of some professionals and um, relaunched his line. Now, his line is very new. Uh, he started in uh, 2014, so it's six years old. Um, the first iteration... I don't understand. It's tacky, but not tacky in a way that makes sense. Like Dolly Parton, who's extremely bright and an extremely liberated, illuminated person, in my opinion, um, is tacky with a purpose. Whatever he put out, this Mr. Paul Emilien, was not tacky with a purpose. I don't understand where he got his bottles. Maybe it's like one of those concepts uh, done in the bathtub. Um, but the first iteration of fragrances were not um, were not bad. They were just really cheesy, French cheesy look, non-French che cheesy cheesy. He figured out that they're cheesy, so he reworked 
uh, some of the fragrances. He launched some new fragrances and he reworked the presentation so that the collection now is coherent and looks like this. As far as I know, most of the, the, the bottles look like this. This is a bottle that I received as a gift from a friend who bought it from Paul Emilien uh, last year in Milan at Essenza. Um, I have good friends. What can I say? The Romanian firecracker, yes. <laughs> Eugene is right there. If we have whack packer, your boss is here. Be nice. <coughs> um, I didn't meet the guy. I don't know who the guy is. I don't know why he doesn't want us to know who he is, but it doesn't really matter. He has uh, quite a few fragrances in his collection. This is part of the uh, new formulas launched in 2019. You won't find it, find it as far as I know. Uh, on the directories, when I received it, there was nothing anywhere. On his website, which is sucks right now, um, there's no information. So I will speak from my nose while sitting down. Uh, the things that I was able to find uh, refer to uh, some of the people that he collaborated with. I said that he did start in the bathtub, but he figured out that he can't really do stuff, particularly when it's, it's science, in the bathtub uh, as a self-taught indie perfumer. So he, you do need a little bit of uh, direction. So he enlisted uh, the aid of two people. I don't know who Paul Mathieu is, I'm guessing he's just the person with the money money, he's the sugar daddy or something. Please collect, correct me if I'm wrong, but I was not able to find anything about this very mysterious person. Um, I don't know at all, what do you know? Uh, <laughs> but the second person he uh, got help from was uh, Patrick Bodifé, his name is B-O-D-I-F-E. E, e with an oxon, uh, who is actually a practical instructor at the Grass Institute of Perfumery. He is one of the teachers there. Uh, as far as I know, he doesn't work uh, for many houses. He's done independent. Mathieu, maybe. Look him up. Um, he's, he hasn't done many collaborations, but uh, he has something with Naso di Raza, Nazo de Raza and something with uh, the Rose and Marius line, newly launched line, which I don't know much about. I think the name is a little gimmicky, but you know, just just a subjective opinion. Um, so this is uh, this is what Patrick Boudifé uh, worked on, um, and we know he is a one of the main in practical instructors there. Uh, makes me think that he was brought in to deal with the scientific part of mixing fragrances, uh, whereas the direct, the, the um, artistic direction stayed uh, firmly planted in the hands of Paul Emilien, which I think is a good thing. Now, just as a disclaimer, I do not know the rest of the line. This is the only fragrance I've been using from them. This is a bomb. This is not le vin ne portera anywhere. This vin doesn't port us anywhere uh, because it's a punch in the face. Uh, a beast uh, of all the all, all kinds you can possibly imagine. And it's not oriental at all, in my opinion. So it's not a wind unless it's like pfft, that kind of wind. Uh, oof, that's not elegant. But you know what I mean? It's the kind that you can't keep for yourself type of wind, which is why I am now sharing. <laughs> and it's not oriental either. Anka from Romania, Mary Macalo. Macalo, is that how you're pronouncing it? Michigan, welcome. And Cozine. And Rich Mitch. And the old factory. Yes. Yeah, I said hi to everyone. Oh, and we have someone from. Finland, Finland? Oh no, Tom and Finland. Never mind. And Andrea and Crocodile. Hi. Um, so this is who's behind Paul Emilien. Um, and this fragrance, like I said, um, was a gift uh, from my friends who were there scoping. There are very few companies in Romania and perfumeries in, in Romania that um, uh, treat perfumery like an art and operate like an artistic gallery. Um, these people are one of them. I think they also ship to the States if you ever want to buy from that far away. But anyway, um, these are um, 
These are the people who scoped Paul Emilia and introduced me to the house. Thank you. If you're live, thank you for that. But when I received this, um, they were thinking about launching for 120 a bottle, which I thought was a bargain. Now I find out that they're selling at 160, which is fair. For 100 mils, it's absolutely fair. It's right on par with everything else niche. But at 120, I got really excited. I think I did an Instagram video on it um, that I later edited because of this particular thing. Catarina from Portugal, welcome. Yes, Van der Ham is not yet released. I don't know. Dollars, yes. <clears throat> uh, the names... Yes, I want to go back to because I have a slight uh, problem with some of them. They are tacky. They're uninspired. I actually think the house's main problem is a lack of direction and differentiation. Because if the fragrances are like this, they're set up fine. They're great. But if the marketing continues to be uh, ambiguous, I think they're going to get lost. So if ever any of you meets Paul Emilien, Tell them to think rebranding, not just repackaging, but to create a niche with a niche uh, and, and think about um, a concept differentiation because otherwise they're going to get lost. Also, using Gypsy in a name, not cool anymore. Just not cool. Um, for a variety of reasons. I'm not talking about cultural appropriation because maybe Mr. Paul Emilia is Roma. But just move away from that. Would you people just move away from that? There are plenty of things to pick from. Just move away from that. Or Van Dorian. What is this Oriental stuff? What is Orient? You know? Seriously, I'm Oriental to somebody who's coming from, from Hawaii. Because I'm in the Orient. I'm in the East for them. Six hours on the plane. Just like the Middle East is for somebody from the Isle of Man. So, yeah, what is this oriental stuff. Come on, cut it out. Done. <laughs> this is advice I give for free because this is what I do for a living in Silicon Valley where differentiation is major, where everybody's making something useful. Whether or not that something is going to catch in a world of tech depends on whether or not you can do a proper positioning um, and targeting. But that's a different story. We can go back um, to that. Today, we're not talking politics. We're discussing Van Dorian from Paul Emilia. First of all, and let me reiterate, this is a bomb. This is a beast. Will not make anything drop. Uh, your mouth is not going to drop. Your boobs, your balls, your boxers, your panties, nothing's going to drop with this thing. Actually, this thing makes everything stay firmly exactly where it is. This provides to me in my head a, a, some sort of spine. This is a tough motherfucker. This is intense and that's why I called it a sheep because this is not oriental um, or it may be for somebody who's only used peonies and lavender their entire life. But this is... I didn't read orientalism either but some things are common sense to me. But I will take a note. <clears throat> um, the bottle looks the way you see it. I don't keep boxes, for particularly for those that I know I'm going to be using and referring back to. Uh, this doesn't necessarily sound or feel like anything else in my collection, just to put it out there. Um, the wording is on the front. The back is like this. And it goes, so maybe we should look into a better way to imprint the bottles to Mr. Emilien, uh, if we care about full presentation. Uh, the top is like this, as always, when we're dealing with shiny things, my camera does not want to focus because it has my beautiful eyes behind it, and it would rather show faces than um, reflections. Um, and let's talk about what's in it now. Yes, it's very resiny. Yes, it's very woody. Yes, it's almost sticky from a variety of um, ingredients I'm going to get into in a minute. Yes, it's very spicy. But above it all, in my humble, humble opinion, um, 
This is a green. This is violent, deep green. This is one of the very few uh, bottom. Nothing. It says HP on the bottom right here, which probably is a reference to who's making the, 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 the bottles. I would guess this is uh, bottled in France by the weight and look of it, but I may be mistaken. There's nothing on the bottom. <clears throat> um, this is one of the very few hot Chypres I know, which is very interesting because Chypre is by definition something that is supposed to be dark. It's supposed to be um, uh, cold. It's supposed to be dungeony. It's supposed to be foresty, woodsy, and so on and so forth. This is a hot sheep. I call it a pseudo sheep because I think it's missing a few elements. There's no uh, perceived kumarn. It might be deep in there. Um, and I think, you know, the, the vanillic spiciness of tonka and the wetness of kumarn is replaced or by other ingredients. I'm not sure if it's intentional or not, but I feel other ingredients that could kind of like slide in. And in the same way, um, Shepra can be um, a Shepra can be built with other green elements apart from oak moss. Uh, Maschi Milano did a really good job with um, raspberry leaves. Other companies use um, cassis leaves and so on and so forth. Sometimes even harder um, uh, carnations can go dark green and spicy. Um, in this case, I believe the oak moss is there. I'm not sure, but I I. I smell it. Um, when I looked it up after Essence, it was not listed um, on uh, Fragrantica. I'm not sure if it's listed now. Uh, I'm pretty sure it wasn't on Parfumo when I uh, last looked for it. So I'm going off my nose and sitting down, like I said. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's oak moss. Um, it's recreated this sheep notion in a way that makes it Hot, like hot lava. Um, I would catalog this as a Shepra, therefore, because there's enough greenery in it and enough support from the bigger base to uh, carry through and make it behave like a Shepra on the skin. Um, the only Shepra close enough to this in the pungency, in the... Okay, thank you. In the pungency, in the um, uh, roundness, in the spiciness, and in the way it fuses, it's one of those things that fuses with the skin, but doesn't with the clothes, it's a very interesting manifestation, is a vintage Magie Noir oil. I've talked about the oil before, um, and the differences between the oil and the Magie Noir alcohol-based vintage. I'm not even going to mention the new one because that is completely irrelevant in my agenda. Um, but other than that, I've never met a sheep that doesn't have big roses, that doesn't have big velvety other things, that doesn't have big vanilla, that, that doesn't have caramel and other, you know, like sweeter things to lift it and enliven it, that doesn't have musk, that is hot. This one is, it's a, it's a, one of the reasons for which I kept it in my collection because again, it fits and fills a spot that no, no other fragrance so far, uh, got close to. Now, um, when you play, when you spray it on and just, just to make it clear, the evolution is not that dramatic and it's not that, uh, um, it's not changing that much. When you spray it on, uh, the, the first impression is slightly sweeter, but also slightly more green than normal. When I first smelled it, I thought I'm smelling cassis leaves. They're not cassis leaves. This is Artemisia all the way. Mixed probably, I'm getting goosebumps because Artemisia is not one of my favorites. Um, mixed probably with something that resembles Angelica. Um, so there's that kind of wet green uh, bitter poison, but sweet, creamy at the same time, odd. Um, the same type of effect I would say I would get from uh, celery root. Um, it's, it's a kind of 
green earthiness that is also creamy and kind of substantial at the same time. But it, just to make it clear, there's <laughs> there's no smell of celery in this one. Not of seed, not of apio, not of root, not of anything. I'm just talking about the impression of uh, green sub substance, sweetness, fashion. Um, in my head, no, I'm not smelling galvanum. There's a little bit of calendula impression. I'm not sure there is calendula. I would rather go towards um, maybe um, wild um, um, chamomile, but that's much, much fresh later on. In the beginning, there's this greenness, and I'm convinced it's a mix of um, uh, Artemisia and uh, um, something like Angelica. We've talked about Angelica before. Um, I'm not going to go back into it, but this greenness is very pow, super, super pow. <sighs> then there's a bunch of um, crispness, which makes me think of galangal root. Um, not quite ginger, more like galangal root, um, burdock root sometimes, particularly if it's it's been uh, fermented, uh, and it has that kind of like <laughs> crunchiness that is almost uh, not typical for the plant when it's alive, but through fermentation or brining, it becomes very, very crunchy. Crunchiness in my head in perfumery usually means, um, uh, and I don't know if this is synesthesia or something else, crunchiness gets associated with anything in the ginger galangal burdock um, type of root uh spicy root family um i would say galangal in this case um so there's a little bit of um spiciness wet spiciness that provides crunch high centitar <clears throat> yes that's in i don't know how it works but in my head when i feel crunch that's usually ginger or galangal sometimes burdock root if it's burdock that comes with a little bit of saltiness this doesn't necessarily have <clears throat> burdock. Is that what you're asking me, Ashfaq? Burdock root. Um, so that's the that's the opening. I also feel some uh, caraway. I also feel a little bit of cumin. I also feel a little bit of. Um, uh, sweet pepper, almost like long pepper. I've talked about long pepper before. I'm sure this is not it. I wish this is it because long pepper is what I'm expecting to see more of. I wish I would see more in, in perfumery. I think it's a fantastic ingredient um, because it's peppery, woody, and floral at the same time. It's a beautiful, beautiful um, concocted natural accord, very sophisticated in my opinion. Um, but these things come on top um, and a little bit of sweetness. Where this sweetness comes from, no idea. You start in, uh, feeling a little bit of uh, smoke insinuating um, and a kind of a, a ascetic, 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 I don't know how to say it in English, um, woody, dry notes. I'm thinking hinoki um, because there's a little bit of uh, airiness. That's where airiness and crunch and freshness ends. Because what comes next, it's a punch in the head from both sides. Uppercut and lateral, whatever. It's, it's, it's very, very intense. The middle uh, blends right into the, um, the base. They're not very well separated when it comes to evolution. Like I said, it's not necessarily linear, but the, the changes are not very dramatic. Um, the middle is a middle, the conceptual middle. Uh, again, it's not time necessarily uh, defined, but conceptually defined. The easier notes of the rest being uh, some floral notes. Um, pretty indistinct, although I do um, feel a little bit of, um, like I said, uh, wild chamomile, uh, some honey-esque notes. It could be acacia, kind of like that. So it's a it's a wettish 
to florally, nondescript, not very perfumey uh, type of smell, which I appreciate. I think anything else would make it too complicated and a little bit too um, like that uh, and confusing to me. Uh, it would also feminize it to the point where it wouldn't ma not make sense anymore because this is not necessarily a gendered fragrance. It's, you know, you can put this on a horse and it would smell fantastic. Probably great. <laughs> um, but I would hate to confine it. And I think any modification of the middle um, would... Uh, straight one way or another which would be against purpose in my opinion about this composition so you guys are very quiet do you still see me or did you fall asleep <laughs> um i would always say aesthetic i don't know what that means or a pony we are watching got it thank you Thank you, Natalie. Natalie. Um, so the middle is relatively floral. It's relatively uh, nondescript, which I appreciate. I think that's the right decision for this. Um, I mentioned maybe acacia flowers because I, I get this um, honey undertone. But um, that works really well with the uh, type of chamomilic, um, not quite medicinal, but herby. Uh, undertone, which feeds back into the green opening of Artemisia and what I perceive as um, Angelica. Um, and then, and then the debauchery starts. Woo -hoo. Now it's getting slightly medicinal. Uh, I believe there's some synth synthetic wood in here. That is not bothersome at all. Oud in synthetic form sometimes makes me howl. Um, this is not that. It's well calibrated. You can tell it's fake, uh, but it's very well calibrated. I have nothing against molecular perfumery. I, if anything, I think it, for, it provides more ingredients to work with. Um, as long as it's not shameless if you put iso e in a bottle and sell it for 110 bucks yeah no i'm not gonna talk about you i think it's futile to each their own but that's not where my interest lies um but if it's well calibrated and if it's well uh treated as yet another tool in a perfumer's block why not i think it's fantastic in this case it provides the um the balance and the coolness that uh this needed because the spices on top the uh weird greenery that became wet very fast it takes it out of um um could take it out of what this is meant to be. So this is kind of holding it back, providing some sort of base to work with, like a like a black blank. Um, I don't say anything. I say nothing because there's nothing to say. Got it? <laughs> um, so this is kind of like a blank neutral canvas that keeps things a little bit cool. Um, reminding us of what a sheep is theoretically supposed to be. On it, a lot of patchouli that is not dampy, that is not uh, menthol-y, so it's not very particular and not going in any uh, straight direction. It's just um, green, leafy, uh, patchouli <laughs> and slightly sweet. Uh, so it's a, a relatively generic uh, interpretation, but like... I can't find the word, a uh, building block type of patchouli. It's not uh, stealing the show, which patchouli can usually do, particularly in combination with oud. This is not doing that. It's just there to provide, to beef up the, the, the substance. Then there's vanilla. Uh, not a necessarily spectacular absolute, but it's good vanilla in this context. It's sweet enough to make this alive and, and warm, like I said in the beginning, but it's not... Um, it, it's not straying this into gourmand or oriental, as people have. Um, the vanilla 
yes, vanilla is also foundational. So at this point, we have oud, patchouli, and vanilla in the foundation. And then the artifices and the 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 uh, the the splashes are, I think, very well placed. Uh, there's a lot of oak moss here, which combines with the greenness of the patchouli, uh, which combines with the um, relative um, nondescript wet vegetalness of the flowers in the middle which goes all the way to the top and blends really beautifully with the Artemisia, which again is not one of my favorites, but in this case works. And the Angelica, it feels like there are threads throughout the perfume that um, take it from the heavier notes to the top very seamlessly. They're common threads that work in parallel. Smoke is another one that goes from the top all the way to the bottom, um, where I think is met with some Styrax and some Benzoic resins. So that this is the blend on the smoky part. <clears throat> um, uh, Styrax and benzoin resin. Then the uh, inoki that I mentioned in the middle. Then the smoke on top. It's kind of like uh, that's the smoky thread. Then there's the green thread that I mentioned earlier. And then there's the uh, edible, live, hot thread that goes between a, a very embery vanilla labdanum uh, probably some in, uh, nondescript you know low quality myrrh maybe uh, but it's an ambery kind of impression going through um, the uh, acacia honey esque notes in the middle and back into the spices and ginger or galangal on top so that's the edible thread. We have the edible, the green, and the smoke threads all working in parallel on kind of every level um, of heaviness, top notes, middle notes, and base notes work really well. Um, it's, it's a very, uh, it almost feels like, I just thought about it, it almost feels like uh, an exercise in perfumery. It's, it's almost like one of those very complicated uh, exercises. If you've studied an instrument, we call them canon. Canon is also a, a religious term in, in Orthodox church uh, that expresses one of those like self-inflicted crazy um, trials that one would you know put themselves through in order to prove themselves like sinless or whatever. Um, so a canon is one very difficult exercise meant to increase dexterity, for example. I studied piano for eight years, uh, hated it, but I was good at it. And canons were sometimes making no sense. You just have to, you know, learn a pattern and then keep playing it faster and faster, higher and higher on the key uh, scale. And sometimes the canons were small songs when, uh, within, in and of themselves. This is kind of like that. It's thought through seamlessly and, and perfectly, like somebody literally sat there and, and created a, a formulaic composition, but it works, which I have to commend. We see this more often the not in French perfumery. This, you know, we have to give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. In this case, we have to give Napoleon what belongs to Napoleon. Um, or pick somebody else from France. Uh, give cre credit where it's due. In, in, in this case, probably because of history, probably because of exercise, probably because of, uh, um, you know, a certain level or kind of aesthetic. This... <clears throat> Yes, 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 exactly. Um, this happens mostly in French perfumery um, with a few uh, exceptions here and there. But it does feel like this this was constructed like that. I have no problem with that. As long as it works, you can do it however you want. Method does not matter uh, as much as the result, but the intention does, in my opinion. Um, so this is, in my opinion, <laughs> <laughs> very, very well constructed. 
um, and and the effect, the total effect is a, a is a notable uh, composition. I was talking about the um, satellites, the 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 things that actually imprint personality on a fragrance, because the common threads I gave you, um, the things that make it what it is. Um, apart what from from what I've already uh, mentioned. Um, I also feel um, saffron, a lot of saffron and something powdery in this. Um, I think it's Turkish kind of saffron, even European crocus type of saffron. I know uh, Persian saffron quite well. Um, this is not it. Um, but it's a, it's a nice touch that, again, makes it warm, makes it hot, takes it out of dampy and woody into hot. Um, I smell some birch, um, kind, smoky, tarry, birchy thing. Um, I smell a little bit of castor oil. I don't know if this does have castrame or not, but uh, it's it's an, it's slightly animalic, furry, smoky, furry, if you want. Um, correct. Religious, except for an old woman's breath. That is more religious than smelling frankincense and myrrh in a musty church. My opinion. <laughs> I've smelled a lot of old women's breaths. <laughs> uh, I used to love talking to old people. I still do. But I used to love, uh, as a child, talking to really old people in Romania. And I used to do it all the time. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, saffron, uh, a little bit of birchy, tarry things. Maybe a little bit of something that smells like castor oil. Slightly animalic, just enough to give it breath. Fur. A E hot E. Um, all of this, I'm getting goosebumps again because this is how it works. The psychosomatic for me, it's like very streamlined. <laughs> but this is it, folks. It's a hot sheep. You can look at it, you can look it up. Yes, you're probably going to read reviews uh, if there are any talking about how. Oriental this is, because it says Van de Rien, right? In my book, this is not Oriental. In my book, this is French perfumery at its best, but it's modernized through the shift from a cold, austere, wild, dark, dampy, strong, uh, out there, cheaper into a hot, personal, moving, squirming, kind of spicy, uh, pseudo sheep. There you have it. I guess it's a pseudo uh, sheep. So I bought Maubusan Estuardo. Good. I'm happy you love it. Does it, nothing similar other than, uh, no. I can't I can't find anything similar to this from what I own or have smelled so far again I haven't <laughs> I haven't smelled everything I don't own everything uh I am a mere human mortal um which means I also forget stuff it happens but from what I have and from what I've owned so far there's nothing like this Explosives is here. I'm happy to hear that. See? Thank you for coming and telling me. I also learn when you come and tell me that it doesn't match what I said. So please do that too. Don't hold it back. I'm not going to take it personally. Scent is very subjective, as you all know. And I'm trying to do my best in explaining things. If it works, it works. Maginoir oil. It was made up until the 80s. Mine, the one that I have now, is from 78. Um, which phase of the fragrance is my favorite? The one after it's settled, because it's, it's because the Artemisia in the in the beginning is is harsh for me. 
but it's a very subjective thing. It, the, the opening is very well constructed, in my opinion. Um, again, I don't know the rest of the line. I don't know anything about Mr. Um, I am not paid to do this review, in case you logged in at the end. <laughs> this was a bottle that people paid money for. So... I like Cheaper CM, but it, to be honest, it wasn't as surprising as some of the other ones. In his collection, I... Sun just came upon me. I do not own Cobra. Uh, I actually don't even know where Cobra is from. Please explain. Um, from Rogue, I think uh, they're not original. Uh, necessarily, they're copying a very traditional model of perfumery. Uh, but the Derviche one, even though it's more subdued than others, I think has one of the best jasmine. 10 minutes. The problem is it only lasts 10 minutes. Like in the middle of the, the, of, of the evolution, uh, Derviche presents one of the most beautiful jasmines I've smelled in the past. Um, past few years at least. So Shiba Siam is fine. Um, I don't think it's as settled, as mature, as, you know, finished as this one is. I don't know what Cobra is. Don't, don't be mad. Explain. It's okay. Sometimes it can be in front of me and my brain is with you, so I don't really get it. <laughs> Help me out. Oh, I don't. I do not know a Cobra vintage. Do I have a favorite Shepra? Uh, I'm still, I think I'm still learning, to be honest. Uh, I, vintage, I do have a full bottle of the newer uh, model, which I adore. I think it's a very, very well calibrated Shepra. I love Oriza Le Grand, um, Shepra Mousse. Um, I think Explosive is a fantastic sheep for the money. Are you kidding me? It's like one of the best. I love um, the <coughs> uh, Maginoir oil. Um, I think the Fendi original is a great sheep. I think the Armani original uh, was a good sheep, but it's copy. it was copying the Fendi original. Um, I think they're a lot of great chipres out, out there. Um, and if you want to know more about chipre, keep an eye on Mr. Sebastian Jara because I went and filmed a chipre video for him, with him, and there's a lot of dirty stuff about Ifra there. I mean, opinions? You want opinions <laughs> and information? Go there. I read all of the research materials. I dug very deep for a long time. So if you want to know information about sheep, keep an eye on Sebastian. He's probably still working on editing that video because I was freaking wild. Yes. Yes, sir. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, DJ Genki says, explosive is great, but it does have a little bit too much oak moss. It was a perfect recommendation. For the money, I think, you know, for the purpose of that video, which is top inexpensive fragrances i think it's a great value for what it um what it provides and that's it um if you like this kind of nerdy reviews lengthy wordy and absolutely indecent sometimes stick around like share subscribe please tell others because if you don't nobody does and Oh, La Nuit. Oh, I have La Nuit. It's one of my most favorite things, but I don't put it necessarily into sheeps. La Nuit, together with um, Teatro a la Scala, are completely in, in a category of their own. I love La Nuit. I think it's... Oh. La Nuit and Teatro are some of the best civets I, I know. <clears throat> What do you know? You should celebrate. There's something I don't know. There you have it. <laughs> it's okay. So, yeah. Hot sheep uh, today with a nose. Um, if you know him, send him here. 
uh, tell him what my opinions opinions <laughs> are about his branding, about his go-to-market strategy, really. <clears throat> because I believe he has a great product if everything is like this, but he needs to work on presentation, packaging, pricing, I think is fine. Uh, but, you know, positioning and so on. All the P's uh, in the pod, in the, in, the, in the perfumery pod. And that's it. Let's say it together, folks, before you leave, <clears throat> keep it real, but keep it kind. Or should I say it? Keep it kind. Everything is great. But keep it real. <laughs> All right? And more importantly, and this is the most important thing that applies to everybody. There you have it. Wherever you go, make it better. Hashtag. I will see you next week when probably we're going to discuss opinions. <laughs> Fun stuff, folks. Thanks for joining. One, two, three, and stream. And yes.